Parsing is the process of separating complex data entries into separate fields, such as the cases of full names and addresses. We will look at the two parsing tutorials provided to see some examples of how this is done. The first parsing tutorial uses two tailored DQC steps to break full names into their components. In this case, our input data has been entered only as a single field called full name. To parse the data, we could use some simple algorithm to split this field into two subfields, but we would run into trouble with data containing titles, initials, or multiple first names. Instead, we will use the steps strip titles and guess name surname to easily parse our list of full names. Note that in both cases it is necessary to have separate dictionaries called lookup files for each data field to be parsed, such as titles and names. Lookup files are lists of valid values to check against. We discuss them in detail in the Lookup Files video tutorial. The strip title step is quite simple to configure. Enter the name of the input column of full names, which includes titles, and the name of the output column that should contain the names with the titles removed. Finally, you can enter a separate column to store the titles that were found in the names column. The titles lookup file should be entered in the title lookup file name field. The next step is to separate the full name column into first and last names using the guest name surname step. This step has a few more options based on whether the names in the input are found in one of the dictionary files. Enter the name of the column that contains the full names with the title stripped out into the in field. Then we see two columns each for the first and last names. The first column stores only the names that have been verified in the dictionary files, whereas the second column stores all names. The next part of the configuration is defining pattern groups. These are the patterns of name formats that we expect to find in the full name column. The most basic format is first name followed by last name, but we should also specify some additional patterns to include middle initials and two first names. Depending on what we know about our data, we may also want to include patterns to check for last name, first name, followed by first name, last name, but in this example, we only look for the first name, last name pattern. Notice that we have two pattern groups that look very similar. In fact, they are the same, except that the first group uses an exclamation point character in the definition. This is a character code that tells DQC to only match this pattern if a validated dictionary name is found. So, the first pattern group is for name patterns where all names in the full name field are found in the dictionary, and the second pattern group is for full names where one or more names are not found in the dictionary. Let's look at the plan's output file to understand this better. In looking at the first record, the full name has been split into a first name and last name in the pure first name original and pure last name original fields. It is also present in the STD first name and STD last name fields, which means that it matched the first pattern group due to both names being present in the name dictionaries. We can verify this by looking at the pattern column, which tells us which pattern, if any, was matched. The exclamation mark tells us that it matched the verified names pattern. The next record, however, has no entry for the STD last name column because the last name was not found in the last name dictionary. The pattern without exclamation marks tells us this, and the explanation column tells us that only part of the full name was found in the dictionary. The third record shows us how the strip title step found and removed two titles from the full name field. This allowed us to successfully parse the full name and separate and validate the first and last name. This entry would have likely fooled a simpler algorithm. Now let's take a quick look at some of the more advanced parsing techniques that are possible in DQC. This file will take an address that has been written all on one line and separate it into each of its different components. We will create new fields for street, city, zip code, and province, and then verify the city, zip code, and province values. First we add the empty columns to which we are going to write the new values with the alter format step. Then we use the column assigner step to look for zip codes and remove spaces from them in order to parse them in the next step. The bulk of the work is done in the pattern parser step, which is a very powerful way to parse any type of data. We first tell DQC how to identify the different types of components we are looking for. By using the definition field, we can specify a type of pattern that describes each type of field. 
For Canadian zip codes, we will pick out groups of six characters that alternate letters and numbers in a specific way. We can also then match them with a list of existing values in the verifier section. We will then look for words of at least two letters that match or closely match a list of Canadian cities, and so on for the street and province values. From here, the pattern parser step is similar to the guest name surname step, where we specified the pattern groups. This example contains comments explaining each pattern group, so you can learn more about them on your own. We can see the final result shows the full address field split out into its individual components. Additionally, the STD prefix fields show the values that have been verified. As you can see, DQC offers powerful parsing tools for names, addresses, and any other data that you may encounter.